Hello and welcome to Baselines, the podcast that discusses Australia's defence bases and the projects shaping them. I'm your host, Darian Macy. All right, uh, let's rewind back to the Garden Island Defence Precinct redevelopments. Uh, you guys probably getting ready for those two big design contracts that are about to hit the market. Things are probably getting pretty crazy right now, so this is going to be like your cheat sheet, your secret weapon. We're going to rewind back to that Commonwealth industry briefing back in May 2023. Those of you who were there will remember it, the one in the Ivy Ballroom. And we're going to pull out all the best bits to help you guys nail those tenders. Okay, so cast your mind back to that room packed with like 200 companies. They're all hungry for a piece of this pie. I mean, Acom, Oricon, Lendlease, all the big guns were there. You could practically feel the electricity in the air, right? And it's no surprise, really. I mean, when the Navy lays out its plans for Garden Island, you know, the heart of the two ocean basin policy, you know, it's going to be big. Nine ships are home ported there, plus visiting vessels. You've got a projected workforce boom of 20% over the next two decades. The facilities need to keep up, and that's where you come in. All right, remember that wish list they presented? The eight key objectives for this whole redevelopment are worth revisiting because this is essentially the blueprint for your success. Modernizing that graving dock, boosting engineering services, they stand out as potential gold mines for your expertise. But let's be real, demolishing outdated buildings and keeping everything running smoothly, that's going to be a logistical nightmare. And then there's the Garden Island 2045 vision that they unveiled. I mean, I got to admit, I got a little swept up in the excitement. Imagine a future where all those outdated buildings are gone. Maybe even that, that iconic Harry Seidler building. And get this, a potential mixed use expansion on the eastern side. Talk about a game changer. And of course, all this ambition comes with a timeline and they laid it out pretty clearly. So gate two approval is aimed for May, 2025, followed by a parliamentary works committee review in February, 2026. Construction kicks off in September, 2026 with a finish line somewhere around 2036. So this is a long game, but as you probably remember from the briefing, it's not all going to be smooth sailing. So let's talk about some of the elephants in the room. Those challenges that attendees flagged in the Slido poll. Starting out with the one everyone loves to hate, procurement complexity. You know what I'm talking about, those complex RFQs, RFTs. They're the request for quotation and request for tenders for those who are new to this game. It can feel like navigating a maze sometimes. And the attendees definitely voiced their concerns. So we'll unpack those later in more detail. Another big one, access and security issues. We're talking about a sensitive defense site. So it's understandable that Getting those defense passes for your workforce, that was a major worry. Delays, logistical nightmares, not exactly ideal, right? And then there's a the challenge of resourcing a skilled workforce. The construction market is red hot. Everyone's fighting for the same talent. Attendees were understandably anxious about attracting and retaining the right people for the job, especially with so much competition for those skills in Sydney. Now, speaking of competition, let's address the Roberts Co. situation. You could practically feel the tension in the room when this one popped up on Slido. They're involved in project management, but barred from bidding in later stages. It's a bit of a head scratcher, I know. The Commonwealth made it clear that the PMO, that's the project management office, was procured competitively through the Defence Infrastructure Panel. And Roberts Co.'s early involvement is all about improving buildability and reducing risk for future tenderers which means you guys. They're basically there to smooth the path, which in theory should make life easier down the line. But here's where things get really interesting. Remember all that buzz around digital delivery? It, well, it wasn't just lip service. They're talking high LOD BIM modeling, digital twins, maybe even AI-driven project management tools. This is a chance to showcase your firm's cutting edge capabilities if you've got them, so flaunt them. And let's not forget about Indigenous participation. They're committed to exceeding procurement targets, which presents both an opportunity and a challenge. It's about finding innovative ways to engage and partner, not just ticking boxes. Now, remember how they keep hammering on about transparency and communication? That wasn't just corporate speak. They were serious about keeping you in the loop, 
throughout this whole process. Remember that virtual engagement room they mentioned? Well, it's your one-stop shop for updates and info. It's going to be a valuable resource to keep those anxieties at bay. All right, we've covered a lot of ground, but before we go deeper into those challenges, let's pause for a second and think about what this means for you. You've got a vision for the future of Garden Island, Garden Island 2045, a timeline and a pretty good grasp of the potential roadblocks ahead. Now let's unpack those challenges a little further. When we come back, we'll dig deeper into those Slido poll responses and what else we can learn from the collective wisdom of the crowd. Hey listeners, if you're in defense infrastructure, you won't want to miss this year's Christmas Infrastructure Social. We're hosting this exclusive event on the evening of the 27th of November at Canberra's Overlo Nishi Hotel. This is your chance to connect with industry leaders, key decision makers, and professionals from across the defense estate community. Whether you're in town for the big industry briefing on the 28th, or just looking to build your network, this is the place to be. We had some amazing feedback on it from our last event. People loved the connections, the venue, and the atmosphere. Tickets start at just $110, and you can get a 20% off with the code Garden Island Podcast. So mark your calendars and join us for an evening of valuable networking, great food, and Christmas cheer. For more information and to grab your ticket, head over to deckdebt.com.au slash events or reach out to me directly at darian.macy at decknet.com.au. Okay, let's dig a little deeper into those Slido responses. Procurement complexity, it's like the biggest headache for defense projects. And those Slido responses, they were screaming with frustration. People were worried about those RFQs and RFTs. They can be so convoluted, you need a PhD to figure them out. And it's understandable. You're investing so much time and resources into these bids. So yeah, clarity and efficiency are super important. And then there was this whole issue of potential conflicts with existing works. Imagine trying to renovate a building that's about to be demolished. Talk about a logistical nightmare. And that just shows how important communication and coordination are going to be between all the different projects happening on this precinct. And then there were the usual concerns about security and access. Access to defense sites are super highly controlled, and the attendees were obviously anxious about getting those defense passes for their workers. I mean, delays there could mess up your whole schedule. And let's not forget about the biggest elephant in the room, resourcing a skilled workforce. The construction industry is booming, and everyone wants the same top talent. And attendees were definitely feeling the pressure, attracting and keeping those skilled workers. Especially with all those big projects happening around Sydney, that's going to be a tough one. Now, of course, this ambition comes with a price tag, and that's where the financial anxieties started to show up. Attendees were saying they were worried about the high cost of working with defense, those long payment times, and the potential for cash flow problems, especially for smaller firms. It just shows how important it is for the Commonwealth to think about these money pressures and make contracts fair for everyone. Okay, so we've gone through those Slido responses, but let's rewind back to the Q&A session at the end of the briefing. That's when things got really specific, and you could practically feel everyone wanting information. Remember how much they talked about needing clear requirements from defense, especially for operational needs and design standards. Makes sense, right? The clearer the instructions, the less chance for mistakes, rework, and costly delays. And then there was this whole discussion around smaller business and how they could get involved. People wanted to know about packaging and procurement strategies, hoping for smaller packages just for SMEs. After all, a diverse supply chain is key to getting innovation and building a stronger industry. But you know what really took over the Q&A? The Roberts Co. question. It kept coming up. But I guess we shouldn't be surprised, given the privileged position this puts them in. The Commonwealth was pretty open about it. They said that Roberts Co. was brought in through a competitive process through the Defence Infrastructure Panel to give advice on buildability and to make the project less risky for future tenderers, meaning you guys. They also said that Roberts Co. wouldn't be allowed to bid on later stages, so that makes it fair for everyone. Transparency is important for building trust, right? Okay, but remember all that talk about digital delivery? Well, that wasn't just talk. They were really talking about creating a central digital environment, like a digital ecosystem, and making the whole project life cycle smoother. Think BIM models, digital twins, and maybe even a common data environment where everyone can work together. It's a big change towards a more modern and efficient way of working. It affects how you set up your teams 
and even how you approach your bids. Now, they were pretty honest about the challenges of this digital change, upskilling, investing in new tech, a whole industry changing its mindset. It's a lot, but it's also a huge opportunity. Those who get on board with the digital wave will be the ones succeeding, while those who stick around the old ways might even get left behind. You know, it's interesting. Sustainability wasn't a big focus in the beginning, but it came up as a hot topic in the Q&A. People wanted to know about low-carbon strategies, whole-of-life delivery, all of it. They even asked about the green star ratings. The Commonwealth's response was sustainability is important and they're working on putting those requirements into the design guidelines and procurement processes. They even hinted at using green star ratings as part of how they will judge future tender responses. So if you're thinking about putting some cutting edge sustainability features into your designs, that's a good thing. Now, I want to share a quote with you that really struck with me. It's from Lieutenant Colonel Napper, the project director at the time. He said, and I quote, We're not the project team that just sits there and says, I'm the smartest person in the room. Whatever it is, you do it this way. We want people's ideas. We want to be able to innovate. That to me says a lot. It's a clear sign that they're open to collaboration, to fresh thinking, to challenging how things are done. It's like they're inviting you to bring your best ideas and be a part of shaping the future of this really important defense precinct. Okay, we've covered a lot. Slido responses, Q&A highlights, and that great quote. But before we finish, let's take a step back and think about the bigger picture. What's the main message here? What's the one thing you really need to remember as you get ready for those tenders? It's this. The Garden Island Defence Precinct, it's not just another project, you know. It's a chance to really make your mark on history, to be part of something big, you know, contributing to Australia's Navy capabilities, not to mention the Sydney shoreline for years to come. Your designs, your innovation can actually shape the future. That's pretty special. I mean, you don't get that opportunity every day. This deep dive has been like your crash course. You're a refresher on all the important stuff from the industry briefing. We've gone through the Slido responses, found the gold nuggets from the Q&A, and even shared some pretty inspiring words from the project director. But here's the thing. This is just the beginning. The real work starts now. So it's time to dust off those notes, revisit those source materials. By the way, the links are in the show notes and really absorb all the details. Start thinking strategically. Where do your strengths line up with those eight key objectives? How can you use your expertise in digital delivery or sustainability to really stand out? And most importantly, how can you put together a bid that shows not just your technical skills, but also that you get the bigger picture, the strategic importance of Garden Island, the challenges and the opportunities? This is your chance to be more than just a design consultant. It's a chance to be a partner a collaborator, a key partner in shaping the future of Australia's naval defence. So go out there, do your homework and make a bid that blows them away. Good luck.